one particular person that I think that uh, at the end of this season might not make it as a Premier League player. And that person is James Milner. James Milner had the worst, well, I say the worst time of his playing days today against Saka. Saka was just hit. Hello, bro. Boom shakalaka. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know, I'm always on, um, I don't know. I'm always activated anytime I see. I don't know. Why. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm appro <laughs> approximately normal, but sometimes they say I've got some steroids. Uh, yeah, it was a, a beautiful day of football. Yes, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely. So I want, I want to get your thoughts on particularly the Arsenal game, Arsenal versus Brighton. Going into this one, uh, in the first half of the game, it was a draw. So I was thinking that, ah, man, I think this is going to be a repetition of what Aston Villa did to them. But surprisingly, Arsenal came back strong, banged in the two goals and... Uh, Amazing cliche. So what are your thoughts about the matchup? First of all, do I still have high hopes? As in, I mean, very high hopes about Arsenal winning the league this season. The answer is no. But then, yes, Arsenal has a better team this year than last year. Because they did one of the best signings of bringing in the clan Rice. And it's also now looking like Havas is a good sign, you know. Yes, but so that's yeah. behind. Um, there's something unique about Arsenal team currently. Um, first of all, they've considered less than any other team, but just like Liverpool, 15-15 each. Um, they scored goals, but not as many as Manchester City, but not so, so far off. I think about 35 goals. In total? In, in total. For this season, right? For this season, for the Premier League. But could you imagine that Brighton, that they faced today, has scored 33 goals? As a high scoring club, but today, after 32 league games, Brighton was unable to score today. After 32 games, Brighton was unable to score today for the first time in 32 games. Wow, and which team stopped them from scoring? Arsenal. Arsenal. That's to also tell you how good their defense line is. Imagine last season, had they been they had. Proficiency from the midfield and the final third. Further that Arsenal could have gotten the league, but then if you also check from the 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 the, the stats right now, we have 17 games already played. Arsenal is uh, is doing about how many points now? 37 or 38? About that. But then yes, we know that uh, Arsenal have not hit the 40 um, uh, marker. Imagine, yeah. By um, the next game, everybody will do their 18 games. That's to tell you that. Um, if Arsenal repeats what it has played for the first half of the season and repeats itself in the second half of the season, Arsenal might not even carry the league. Wow. Yes. Why is that? Reason, because right now, as it stands, Arsenal has lost two and draw, drawn three. Why Liverpool, um, uh, Liverpool, Liverpool, okay, can I get the stats with what has happened today? They are just one point um, uh, behind each other. But then... It should be the same losses, but more draws for Liverpool. It should. Yes, yes, with what ha has happened, happened today. today. Yeah. But then, if you now say, okay, if Arsenal has uh, 40 points at the end, or let's say 41, let's say max 41 by playing 18 games, if you multiply it, that means at the end of 38 games, okay, Arsenal will be having about, um, about 80 82, 83 points, and that might not just be, be enough. enough. That is, if just imagine too, we are just imagining. It's been about imagination. <laughs> imagination. This is not. This is not. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> this is not. I'm not advertising for for Sony, but then we just have to imagine. So if paraventure the second half of the season, you have a team, maybe like Liverpool, um, like uh, Manchester City. I think Manchester City are the one that can. To some persons, we say shock, but then they seem to be the team that can play without losing a game in the, in the next half. Might just be. I understand that. Okay, yesterday with Crystal Palace, it wasn't so, so easy for them. Um, two goes up, two, two at the end of the day. But then, going back to our discussion, Arsenal had a very good game today. The first half, they had plenty chances. And I was like, come on, maybe what, has, what happened to them during the Aston Villa game, I repeat it, because Arsenal had plenty plenty chances against Aston Villa but at the end of the day they couldn't win that game I thought that was going to happen yes but Arsenal they were they were playing so nice 
for a Brighton team that holds position. In fact, during the press conference, that's the post-match um, conference, the coach opened his mouth that he has never, that the team has never suffered the way they suffered today in the hands of Arsenal. In as much as the, even the possession, it was just about 50-50 at the end of the possession, at the end of the game. But then in the first half, Arsenal showed them Pepe, but they were not able to, to score those goals. What particular person that I think that uh, at the end of this season might not make it as a Premier League player? And that person is James Milner. James Milner had the worst, well, I say the worst time of his playing days today against Saka. Saka was just, hey, Saka should how old? Oh, I don't want to say how old. At 37, person never old now. But in football, you are old. But he showed him, he dropped him so, as if he was. And what happened? Six thirty minutes, they just threw him out of the game. They just said, okay, I beg, you don't try, come out. Saka overran him. They just give him trooper. The two of them will just be run. As the trooper will just be looking. As it, oh. <laughs> and you just wonder, how can he be playing left back for a Brighton team that has been so, so proficient? A Brighton team that has been biting everybody this season. Omo, it was an, an, an outstanding game for us. And at the end of the day, um, uh, big ups to Gabriel Jesus. He came out uh, as the saviour. Yes, um, the saviour <laughs> will be really marked on the 25th. But then he came today. <laughs> he came today to show that the saviour is around. And what happened? He he opened the scoring, and Arsenal had a breath of fresh air. Then what then happened? Havas, Chelsea flop, scored the second goal, and that goal was banging. It was outstanding. I thought that you should go have some fun. Um, it was a good day at the office today. And look at what happened with the Liverpool game. It gave them more time to at least be there as the as the at, at the top at, at the top of the uh, the table. We even thought that uh, um, at the time we thought that Aston Villa, you know, there were plenty of permutations today that Aston Villa might also be at the top at the top position today. But then Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal, Arsenal made their way up there. Let's see how it goes. All right. So. Um let me see, take you back to Havertz. What would you really say has happened to this young man? Because when he first came into the team, a lot of Arsenal fans were like, oh man, why would they bring such a, a slow player for a team like Arsenal? He doesn't fit into the team. And of course, Ateta having so much patience in this guy. What do, you, do you really think that Ateta's patience on Havertz really brought about the transformation to what he has become now? Havertz is at home. Just like you cannot grow, you cannot grow apple in Obi Apple. The apple will die. It will just, if you like, go and carry all the major, carry all of them and come together to pray for that apple. That apple will not survive. That is what is happening to Havas. Havas has come home to stay. To stay. And look at the position where he's been. Havas is playing Ozil. How can Havas be playing Ozil? Who would imagine that Havas will be playing the Ozil kind of football? Soft, sleek. Throwing in the passes, coming back to defend. He will go to the center of the defense of the midfield. He will come to the left, combining with Zinchenko, combining with um, in fact, he's more like a, um, an inverted triangle because he gives passes to Martinelli. He also um, uh, comes back for uh, Zinchenko to go in as in ah, have us. And look at how the goal happened. Look at how the goal happened. He was well positioned. And look at you know, you know, from uh, my last analysis about Arsenal and Havas, you, you, he, he, he made that point again today that he is that um, a missing puzzle for the team. Because when you don't expect him to be there or you don't expect any player to be there, Havas is there. Out of nowhere. Like a ghost. <laughs> so he had a, an amazing gift. I'm scared though. Why am I scared? Because Chelsea has never given Arsenal <laughs> has never given Arsenal good players. So I don't know whether this one is film trick. Maybe when he's been needed the most, that's where he will flow. But then I cannot put all my faith in an ex Chelsea player. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll end it at this point. Thank you, bro. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining Thank me. You. Have a lovely night. Right? You too. Bro.